Hello, everyone. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving weekend. Welcome back to Rams Revealed. I'm your host, J.B. Long. Our guest is a 29-year-old punter. First season with the Los Angeles Rams, Riley Dixon. And as always, Rams Revealed is presented by NFL All Day. Riley, thanks for coming by. Good to sit down with you. Yeah, thanks for having me. How are you holding up? Hanging in there. Um, You know, sometimes things don't always go the way they're supposed to, but, um, you know, it's keep fighting, keep showing up to work every day and, and trying to get better and just keep stacking blocks. Yeah, Rams 3-8. and eight. They're in the midst of a five-game scuffle here. Home to the Seahawks this week, though, at SoFi. Six games remaining, two of them against their NFC West rival from the Pacific Northwest. So I assume this to be the case, but punters take losses just as hard as every other corner of the roster. Is that true? Absolutely. Yeah, we take it. Now, you know, it's one of those things. It's kind of a thankless job, but you always look back on a game and say there are plenty of places I could have helped the team win. And, um, you know, losing is never fun for anybody, including us. So we take it just as hard. Well, I think this most recent game against the Kansas City Chiefs is a good example of some ways in which you can help a team win or get closer to victory. Uh, a lot of plays that you made against the Chiefs kept the Rams in it, uh, helped them stay connected so why don't we go to our nfl all day play of the game and it comes in the second quarter of last week's loss to the chiefs a fake punt completion to jacob harris on fourth and five you get six okay you start us off take it from the beginning how did you see it yeah so it's um you know we kind of have a couple different scenarios that unfold there and um you know ben skronik stepping in at personal protector and making the call and adjusting to the to what we saw and um you know we, we tapped off on it and Jacob ran a great route, got great separation. Um, you know, we completed the pass and got the first down. And any anytime we can keep the offense on the field is a win for us. So happy to play a small part. All right, so your passing stats as a member of the Rams now. Two for two this season, 18 yards, a passer rating of 118.7. That would lead the NFL if you qualified. <laughs> just ahead of Tua. I think that's uh, that's a little skewed, but uh, <laughs> take it any way I can get it. And your career numbers, three of five passing. You go into every week with a few of those live just in case the Rams coaching staff deems them necessary? Yeah, Joe DeCamillis, I mean, I had him my rookie year, and we ran we ran a couple with him there. And, um, you know, it's just, a, it's just a way to keep – keep our offense on the field and if we can help in a, in a way to help us score points and, and help us win a game is something we love doing so um, he's always called it pretty aggressive and you know I've loved playing for him. Riley you're a, a punter turned passer in that situation but I also imagine there's a little bit of actor in you right because you probably have to go through your normal routine yeah. to make sure there's no tells. Yeah I try to make it look you know as normal as possible and um, you know with every fake there's always a check out so I got to be ready to punt either way so um, I, I like to keep my same routine and, and keep myself in the same rhythm and um, try to hide it as best I can. That's a good point so you go out there saying hey obviously it's fourth and five we want to convert this we're going to activate this and throw this right. unless they right. do something to talk us out of that in which case you still need to do your normal operation. Still, still need to be able to kick yes. Interesting. Uh, for Jacob Harris, that's his first NFL reception. That's pretty cool that, that you were a part of that. That's moment really cool. That's really cool. I mean, he's a, he's a great kid. He's been working really hard, and um, he's been showing us a lot of great things on special teams. And you know, I have the utmost trust in him out there. And you know, really really excited to be a part of his first completion. Now, you always like to punt with the same ball. Is that correct? You have one that so, you run out there to kick with. Yeah. So the NFL has a rule where you, the three footballs that you the special teams use during the game have to be broken in the day of the game. Um, so that ball, you know is different every week but um you know we got our guy in the in the equipment room Merg makes a great football for us and um he puts us out there with a with a really um you know replicable ball and we we enjoy it it just made me wonder if Jacob's like I want to keep this this is my first NFL (laughs) catch then you're down to two for the rest of the game yeah so I, I I hope he gets that ball um but we definitely had to use that that first one for the rest of the game well let's extend our NFL all day play of the game a little bit further because same sequence unfortunately the Rams are unable to capitalize on that moment yeah. they bring it back out and you drop one inside the five that was a gem 48 yards how did that feel yeah that was cool um, that was a that was a little rolled banana punt um, you know there's been some guys including Johnny Hecker who have been kind of at the forefront of, of that sp- specific kick and um, just watching and learning from those guys him and Logan Cook have done a great job with that and um, you know I was happy to be able to put it into action I'm also giving you credit for the muff punt in the first quarter that uh, Skoranek played a role in. Robert Rochelle recovered. What'd you put into that one? Um, you know, that wasn't my best kick of the year, but um, like I said, Benny stepping in and just making a great play. I mean, you know, the faster guys get down there, the more pressure it puts on the returner. And, and seeing Ben in that guy's face running as fast as he does, I mean, that's a that's a tough play for that guy to make. And, um, you know, the guys made, a, made did a great job, you know, capitalizing on a big play for us. What is the best feeling in punting? I mean, those are three pretty unique examples within one game. Yeah. What gets you the most amped? You know, I've always loved the fakes. Um, you know, that's always been a super exciting thing for me, you know, starting in college, running a lot of those. But, you know, for me, the biggest thing is 
being able to pin an opponent deep, um, you know, making the Chiefs go, you know, first and 96 there um, at the end of the second quarter is, is big. And, um, you know, just seeing the reaction from the team and seeing the energy that that puts into the defense and, and the special teams and, you know, just giving the guys a spark is really what I've always loved. Riley, conversely, what's the worst feeling in punting? Is it getting one blocked? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that's that's the worst for me. Um, getting one blocked or, you know, a return for a touchdown. Those are the two that are really we try to stay away from. I thought you got cut in half against the Falcons. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That was one of the most gruesome punt blocks I've ever seen. Yeah, it, it didn't look good. Uh, it didn't feel great, but, um, you know, I was fortunate to be able to walk away from that one. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, speaking of walking us through a week in the life of an NFL specialist, this is Monday as we record this. Right. Uh, we know the team's cadence is day off Tuesday, have you practice is Wednesday, Thursday. Um, what do you do to prepare yourself for the next game? Yeah, so Mondays we have a lift and kind of a little recovery session. Um, my personal schedule is Wednesday we don't have punt, so I, I shut it down on Wednesday, and then on Thursday I come back. Um, we have kind of a punt, punt return day that day, and we also have on Friday. So um, I go Thursday, Friday, Sunday, um, which is good because it kind of gives me some time on the back end to recover. Um, you know, we do get sore contrary to Okay, so load belief. management's a real deal. Yeah, we, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's using the same muscle over and over again, and, you know, I only use one leg. So um, that leg does get tired, believe it or not. Um, so it is nice to get a couple days and let it recover after a game, which is my heaviest workload. How many punts per week do you think you bang out? Um, to a fault, I think I kick more than most, um, which is not necessarily a good thing. Um, gosh, that's tough. A couple hundred, I'd say. Two, How about game day? Game Again, day is you preparing uh, yeah. for Sunday in the NFL. Too many on my own fault. Not you know the game punts are one thing. When I have four punts, I mean that's not gonna that's not gonna kill me. But you know I've always been a guy who kicks too many footballs. You know I've, J Jody's taken footballs away from me and taught me to shut it down. <laughs> but, um, you know for me I've always I've always loved it. Um, I really think I'm like addicted to the feeling and addicted to chasing perfection, which in punting is not possible. Yeah. Um, but I, I just enjoy chasing it. So I think of your unit as like the uh, the bullpen of football, right? Yeah. Sometimes you're busy. Sometimes you got the afternoon off. Right. How do you pass the time on the sideline with with Matt? And Matt? Yeah, we find we find ways. I mean, the hardest thing for me is is staying loose. I mean, you think in the course of a four hour game, you have four punts. You know, you've got to be ready to go at any time in that four hours. So, um, you know, we pass time. We like to watch the game and we sit on the sideline, crack jokes and stay involved in the game but we we find ways to pass it. and it's not just punting you're a part of the whole operation right you're yeah. the you're holder for matt gay how about the 58 yarder he drilled in new orleans what, yeah. what was that like to be a part of you know he's he's unbelievable and that, again that's another one of those thankless situations where you know at the end of the game and when we're down two scores yeah, it's desperation like mode. Mm -hmm. hey we're gonna run you out there on third down and it's a 58 yarder but you know don't miss it because if you do the game's over um, that's a really tough spot to be in as a kicker and you know he's you know, he's one of the best I've seen. His the, the head he has on his shoulders, his confidence, and his ability to, you know, put his foot on the ball and his athletic ability there is some of the best I've seen. Um, and he's, like I said, he's he's unbelievable. Yeah, he's still kind of new to the kicking profession too. Yeah. A soccer player who changed streams uh, late in his college career. I feel like his best kicking is still ahead of him. I mean, absolutely. I feel like a 60 yarder, 60 plus yarder oh, in his future, don't you? Yeah, he doesn't even know how talented he is, and you know, I think. You know that's that's really good for him, and um, he's driven. He loves he loves getting better, and he loves working on it just like we all do. So um, his best football is definitely ahead of him. Yeah. So I know how to evaluate Matt Gay and a place kicker. How do you evaluate punting? Like, is there a punting stat that matters most to you? How do you measure success? Yeah. So the big one is net punt. So that's the punt minus the return yards or minus you know any penalty or uh, touchback or anything that occurs. So that's kind of the one because that at the end of the day is is what you know what you get out of the play the yardage you you receive as a as a team so um, that takes a lot of things into effect you know some sometimes kicking the ball 60 yards isn't the best thing if they get a 30 yard return then you net 30. Um, so that's that's kind of the stat that I chase after and that's that's a team stat as well so that en encompasses everybody and everybody takes credit for that but um, you know that's the one that I always look at is you know how how good did we do as a team here. Hmm. So you were drafted by Denver that's how you started your career coming out of Syracuse all rookie team in 2016 traded to the Giants in 2018. So that makes Christmas at SoFi a revenge game for you, right? Against the Broncos, you've had that one circled? Yep, I've had I've had that one circled. <laughs> um, last year with the Giants was actually my first time playing against the Broncos. Um, so that one, that was that was cool to see a lot of, you know, former teammates, coaches. Um, but this, this one on Christmas is going to mean a little something different. I, I went down a strange pathway in my research this morning. You're on the short list of punters who have actually been traded. According to pro football uh, records, 14 of you, including Corey Bajorquez, who was yeah. like a, a late 
training camp, I guess it was, trade by the Rams recently. So yeah. you're not a position that often uh, goes different directions. Yeah, that, that was, uh, I, I didn't know that, but that was an interesting scenario for me. And, um, you know, the, the Broncos brought in Marquette King there, and mm -hmm. I was on the way out, and I was fortunate enough to receive, a, you know, a couple offers from a couple teams who were interested in me. So, um, you know, that was, a, that was a good feeling for me amidst a kind of treacherous time in my life. But Sure. <laughs> So before we get to that Christmas game and some other ones along the schedule, the Seahawks, as I mentioned, are up next. Uh, and I, I don't imagine there's any reason for you to dig into a scouting report on the opposing team's <laughs> kicker. But yeah. but Michael Dixon's a good one, and I know it's a close community. I'm sure you admire the work that he's done as a pro. Absolutely. I mean, that kid that kid's taken the league by storm. And, um, you know, starting in college, I mean, the guy was a MVP of a bowl game. I mean, he dropped 10 of 11 punts inside the 20. He's incredibly talented and um, you know as a punter I'm always looking to to get better in my profession mm -hmm. and I mean even as a rookie to me age is irrelevant in this game I mean he came in and just I mean I was learning from him and the way that he plays is the way he carries himself he's so athletic and and so strong in so many aspects so um, definitely a, a you know big fan of the work that he's done all right so since we're on that topic how about what happened at Tampa Bay their kid Jake Camarda had that yeah. 74 that was one of the best punting performances I've seen in person and I I you know he's a he's a super humble nice kid and after the game I, I mean halfway through the game we were all sitting there I was like you know you got to tip your hat to him it was I said in my time I've been watching football it was the best punting performance I've ever seen and I told him that and um, you know he really did come out of his shell there and just have an unbelievable game and mm. um, you know a lot of respect to him for that and in the, the things that he's done and will do in this league. You dropped his name earlier you know how highly regarded Johnny Hecker was uh, in this organization in this community I think you've done really well stepping in and filling in his punting shoes uh, yeah. what do you think of Johnny what do you know of Johnny and what's this experience been like at this juncture of your career? Yeah um, I can't say enough good things about Johnny. I mean, coming in the league as a young guy, he was one of the first ones to offer his help, offer his assistance, and um, that really speaks to the person he is both on and off the field. Um, so a guy I look up to in every aspect of life, in sports, um, I've been watching his film for as long as he's been punting. I've mm. been studying him. and. Um, you know, like I said, I think I think the best learn from the best, and I've always looked up to him. And um, even throughout the process, where you know he was released and I was signed, I mean, he was again one of the first people to send me a message saying, "Congrats," and uh, you know, you're going to do great if you need anything. You know, I'm here. And again, for a guy who spent his career here and just you know was on the out, is again just speaks to who he is as a person. And um, again, I can't say enough good things about Johnny. Yeah, Hunter. it's nice to see him and his family having a good time in Carolina. Uh, so from filling Johnny Hecker's shoes to my cause, my cleats. And this is the annual game that I know we all look forward to coming up at SoFi. Uh, and it sounds like you have a charity that you've had a long running relationship with that you yes. will continue to support this weekend. Yes. Can you tell us about Uplifting Athletes? Yeah, Uplifting Athletes is an organization that raises money and, and awareness for rare diseases. Um, it was brought to Syracuse, so they go throughout you know, college and colleges and universities, and they do a lift for life, which is, again, raising money and awareness for these rare diseases. Um, it's very special to me because it was brought to Syracuse for a guy named Rob Long, who punted at Syracuse before me, um, a couple years before me. And he was one of the top rated punters in his class, um, was supposed to be a you know, mid-round draft pick. Um, and before his final game, for the bowl game his senior year, he was diagnosed with brain cancer. Um, so after a long fought battle with brain cancer and, um, you know, he's, he's healthy, he's in remission now, but, um, so that was that, you know, that was something that we brought to Syracuse to raise money and awareness for him. Um, now he's working for them. He's, he's, you know, doing great. He's been one of my best friends, mentors, you know, I really look up to the guy in all aspects. And, um, so, you know, for me to do that for him and something so small, you know, and, and help raise money awareness for rare diseases and uplifting athletes is is awesome. So you've done season long punting drives and then yep. this Sunday you'll have specially designed cleats that will then get auctioned off to support yes. the cause. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, you do more than run in your cleats, of course. Are you comfortable kicking with a new pair? Do, yeah, do you so, mix and match? Like how does that go? That's that's interesting. Um, you know, some guys get superstitious with cleats. I don't I don't necessarily feel superstitious, but I do like a consistency with them. Like I don't wear the same pair, but you know, I like to see the same thing. And um, you probably don't want a new one on game. Day. Yeah. So I, you know, especially a new one. Um, so I usually wear these cleats and warmups and then they'll be auctioned off or given back for, you know, purposes of raising money for that organization. But, um, I probably won't wear them in the game just because I'm, that makes sense. Yeah. It's, it's just a, it's a comfort level thing, but, um, you know, all the support goes to them. So you led us to Syracuse, New York a little bit. And yes, you go there for college, but uh, even earlier in your upbringing, you're born and raised upstate New York? Born and raised upstate New York, Sylvan Beach, a uh, little small town on Oneida Lake. 
Um, I was a walk-on at Syracuse. I went to high school in the Christian Brothers Academy in Syracuse, and, uh, you know, I really never left. I'm still living there now. Uh, me and my wife are looking at some property in the area now and looking to settle down there for good. Good for you. Were you always a punter? I mean, you're six foot four. You, you remind me of Johnny Hecker in terms of your frame and your athleticism. Other interests growing up? I was a big baseball player. Baseball was kind of my first passion, first love. Um, I was a quarterback in high school as well. Um, that kind of fell through, and you know, I thought baseball was going to be the path for me. And um, it was about 11th grade where I almost rediscovered that I could kick. I kicked a little bit growing up. I did, you know, punt, pass, and kick. I kicked for the Pop Warner team, and um, really didn't kick another football until my junior year of high school. And um, quarterback wasn't really working out for me, and I kind of teed up a couple balls and made 10 for 10 from like 45 yards. And I was nice. like, hey, I, this is this is fun. I think I could do this. Um, a couple years later, walk on at Syracuse. They offered me a, a walk on position really late in the process, recruiting process. It was, I think, January of my senior year. Most people were committed to colleges or, you know, made up their minds. And I was kind of hanging out, waiting for something. And, um, you know, got to stay at home, got to be a little bit of a hometown kid there. And that's awesome. Was there for five years. So I'm taking my six year old to first grade this morning, and he has two comments off of yesterday's game. The first is the Rams' new quarterback is really fast, mm -hmm. which is true. Um, and he said that his favorite play was your pass to, to <laughs> Jacob Harris. Um, so poor guy, uh, his dad's genes are terrible and his mom's are not much better. I don't think he has a future as a defensive tackle, yeah. but he does kick really well. Like, I'm sure you get asked this all the time by parents and friends and family like, what's a good path into punting? Like, if you wanted yeah. to be a punter or your kid wants to get into punting, what would you say? You know, I, I get that question a lot. And a lot. And my my one answer is it's never too late um, because I, I think I'm a, you know, living, breathing proof that, yeah. you know, you can you can figure it out. And, um, you know, I was blessed with some pretty great athletic ability and, and a good frame for punting, but um, just start them young, start kicking. And that was the only, the only thing I could remember, you know, until my junior year was just kicking and kicking more and playing soccer and you know just putting your foot on a ball and um, you know feeling it out as you grow and your body develops it's I, I think that's the best thing you, you can do so you gravitated to football grew up playing baseball but Syracuse New York it, that's a basketball community it am is. I wrong no it absolutely is and did the dates line up did you go to the final four not you but did the orange go to the final four your freshman and senior years of college I I'm not too sure okay. about that. I do remember there was one. I do remember for sure. It's like C.J. Fair, Michael Carter Williams, losing yeah. to Michigan was one, yep. and then the other Cinderella run that North Carolina. Ended, yes, yes. Maybe at the end of your college. Team. Yeah, that was that was towards the back end. But yeah, they've they've had a great program, and as we talked about earlier, Jim Beheim has done a great job with that team, and um, you know, looking forward to seeing what they can do this year. Yeah, shout out to a Skinny Atlas, a great Finger Lake, uh, <laughs> and both of our backgrounds. All right, let's finish uh, with this edition of Rams Reveal presented by NFL All Day with a segment we call Three and Out. Uh, as I primed you before the show, uh, this is a bit that we do where we have three really difficult questions, but the upshot is if you nail them all, I will make a donation to the LA Rounds Foundation on your behalf. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, Riley, when people ask you, hey, what do you do for a living? Do you always answer truthfully? <laughs> <sighs> I try not to lie. So I do answer truthfully, but I bend the truth a little like bit. Like I'm a professional football player, period. Yes. No further details. Sometimes I leave it at athlete. Okay. Professional athlete. Professional athlete. You know, sometimes that'll spark it into another question, but um, I don't mind telling people because I, you know, I look back when I was a, you know, not a professional athlete and um, how cool it was just to see like the, the high school football players, you know, running around. So, um, you know, as, as, you know, humble as I try to be or think that I may am, mm -hmm. um, I do think sometimes there's a way to bless people's lives with a little bit of, you know, a smile or, you know, a cool thing. So yeah. one of the reasons I ask is because it's cool traveling with you all during the season and, you know, wearing the team apparel and right. someone will stop me in the hotel and be like, Oh, do you play for the Rams? And right. I sometimes tell the truth <laughs> and other times tell them I'm the backup punter. <laughs> there you, know? you go. There sometimes you go. it works, sometimes it doesn't. No all right, let's say there. the Rams had a uh, 2022 golf invitational. Okay. Organization wide event. Mm. Who wins the long drive competition? <laughs> Oh man, we got a, we got a couple of good golfers on this team. I know. Um, you know, Matt Gay's Matt Gay's definitely in that competition. That he's a he's a real player. Um, Nick Scott might be up there as well. I, surprisingly, um, hits the ball an absolute mile. Um, it's not fair that Matt can kick it as far as he does and hit it. As he, far. He's one of those guys you could you could make up a sport, and I promise you, he'd be good at it. Yeah, he's he's got it all. But you know, I'm going to go with it with a dark horse here. I'm going to say Coleman Shelton. 
Really? Coleman has a very good golf swing. How about that? All yeah. right, so that'd be a pretty good foursome then. You, Matt, yeah. Nick, and Coleman. We could compete. You think you could take all comers? <laughs> yeah. We, we could compete. All right, that's a good answer to question number two here on three and out. Let's finish with this one. And it's, this is crowdsourcing. We need everyone's participation here in this answer. What can be done about the Rams photo on your Wikipedia page? <laughs> I can tell by your reaction, you've seen it. You know what I'm talking about. I've, it, it, this, is a, this is a sore subject for Who me. Who took that? I have no idea. And before that, my picture from the Broncos was another awful picture. And I have friends who have Wikipedia accounts that were able to change it, and okay. it was like changed back within seconds. And I don't know. Oh, <laughs> so, really? It's, somebody's got it out for me. It's been replaced for the better and yes. it reverts back to yes. just like the grainy yep. through the net. Through the net. Fan picture shot in my section backside. 506. Yeah. We need to work on this. Okay. I mean, because I was going to offer, like, I think we I need have high res photos of you at this stage of your Rams career. We right. could maybe recruit someone who's got Wikipedia access. Right. But you're saying it's going to revert back to that. The one before was me with like my legs crossed, making a funny face, you know, standing all awkwardly. And we had tried to change it and it was changed back in minutes. Oh. So somebody's got it out for me. I, I really thought help. we were going to be able to, to maybe gift you something for Christmas, <laughs> but this could be more of a challenge than we know of. We'll keep throwing fourth down conversions and i'm confident that maybe they'll get a picture of you throwing the football rather that'd be than, pretty cool rather than punting it riley i know it's a, a difficult season right now for the rams difficult moment but we appreciate you stopping by great to get to know the rams behind the helmets and pads a little bit and uh, we're so glad to have you here in los angeles good luck against the seahawks thanks for having me jb I all right for riley dixon i'm jb long this is rams revealed presented by nfl all day <laughs>